this. We've got two parts, part A and part B. Part A is a viscous cream colored liquid that contains a polyether polyol, which is a silicone surfactant and a catalyst. Uh, part B is very syrupy and dark brown. And we're going to add these together and mix them, and they will expand to 30 times its size. Alright, here we go. Part B is, like I said, a dark brown liquid that contains diphenylmethane diisocyanate, which is C6H52CNCO2, and higher oligomers and, uh, of diisocyanate. Uh, when, they, when part A and part B combine with the Okay, when the polyether polyol part A is mixed with the diisocyanate part B, an exothermic polymerization reaction occurs. So this is going to heat up when it expands. Mm, looks like a milkshake. Don't drink it. <laughs> but then it would expand in my stomach. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> now we just gotta wait for it to expand. This is as interesting as my reaction. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll ask you a whole bunch of questions while we're waiting. Why is it not expanding? Because it takes a while. It's a very slow reaction. Okay. What is a silicone surfactant? Because that's basically what you boiled down to what parquet was. Uh, it's. Silicone. How'd you get it? Uh, it came in this here bottle right here. What's the bottle say it is? Uh, it says polyurethane foam system. Part A mixture containing a polyether polyol, a tertiary amine, trichlorofluoromethane, and a silicone surfactant. It doesn't actually give. So Shannon, he will report back to you tomorrow as part of his grade. He will let you know a little bit more about this uh, polyurethane, right? Yes. Why is it called a polyurethane? Because it's made up of multiple urethane ions. Uh, ions. Ions. Molecules. What's the major uh, atom? In your polyurethane system, uh, is looks like there's C and N in the middle, and then somewhere R with an apostrophe. That's <laughs> 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 what it is. Mastery. I know what it is. And here it's starting to expand. So, Michael, what is a polymer? Polymer is a you ever heard of polyester before? Yes. It's jackets, like jackets and stuff. What about it? With jackets, what are you talking about? The zipper or what? It's the like the coating. The material? Yeah. Okay. And then this stuff is that this polyurethane is actually used 
uh, and furniture, packaging, insulation, and flotation devices. How many of you have seen the spray styrofoam or spray foam <laughs> that they put in walls? Before they put drywall up? Yeah. Actually, what is happening is uh, during this polymerization reaction, uh, this, there's a small amount of water in there that reacts with the diisocyanate part B, and then it starts decomposing and produces carbon dioxide gas, which is all these little bubbles inside there, which actually makes it expand. Is there steam that would be drawn off? Steam? Yeah, there should there's it's exothermic, so there's but there's no steam bit. coming out. Uh I don't see any steam coming out. No. A polymer is a carbon chain. Long and then what's actually happening is it is linking one carbon molecule to another, to another, and to another to form a network, if you will of long carbon chains. Well, Michael's going to explain that to you tomorrow. Yes. When he does some uh, additional research to support your questions. Right, Shannon? Right. Does this Anything have else for uh, Michael? Does this have some sort of end point? We, we know it's finished. Um, not really. No. It just kind of stops when it runs out of stuff to react with. That's cool. So there probably is a limiting reagent somewhere. In there, yes, right? it's whichever one is not, whichever one has the least volume, which, I, which you're supposed to roughly have. So which one is a limiting reagent? Probably part B because there's a little bit less of that one that I put in. Does it matter uh, the volume? The number of moles. Uh, not really, no. Install moles and all that. But. Okay, thank you.